We're talking today specifically about the overcommitted organization. What does that even mean? Well, we take a particular angle into the overcommitted organization. There's lots of ways to think about this topic. But um, let me give a shout out to my co-author, Mark Mortensen at INSEAD. And Mark and I together wrote this article that, that Klaus mentioned um, that became the cover story, et cetera. And we take a particular angle into the overcommitted organization. We're thinking specifically about the phenomenon in today's companies, firms, organizations, where people are working on multiple projects, multiple teams, multiple initiatives, committees, task forces, right? Does this start to sound familiar to you? Yeah, and when you have this phenomenon where people are stretched across multiple competing sometimes projects or initiatives, it creates some pretty commonly known effects. And yet, what we discovered is that so many of those effects, so many of the adverse effects, are felt at the individual level. And there's hardly a company or an organization out there that is fully equipped to understand the root cause in a structural sense, in a cultural sense, in an organizational sense of why it is that individuals are feeling stress and burnout and overload, et cetera. So that's how we approach this issue, is to say, what's happening inside an organization that means people are spread out, right? We know that this is a phenomenon that's been going on for quite some time. It's been accelerating. There are lots and lots of good reasons behind this. And yet, we think we're probably at the stage where it's somewhat unsustainable. What we see is that um, in any organization, the idea of thinking about risk is incredibly popular and important, right? Chief risk officer is a, is a, um, uh, a position that is more and more common across all kinds of organizations. And yet, very few are thinking about human capital interdependence, right? This, this um, shock effect as a potential strategic or organizational risk in the organization. And here's um, one way that we thought we could think about this. You know, so imagine that there are two teams, really simplistic example, but there's two teams. Um, it looks like this, right? The, there's the orange team and the blue team. And there's a shock that hits the orange team. In this instance, half of the team members are shared with the blue team. This is sort of what happened in that life sciences company. Right? They had a lot of overlap between those two high priority projects, not surprising. And so when the orange team got a shock from the regulators, the blue team really suffered. Think about this. There's probably, you know, organizations don't have one pattern or the other. Um, they tend to have both. Um, and so here, when a shock hits the orange team, it affects lots of other teams. Now, the first one, you know, this looks a lot more like ripples in a pond, right? Where the, there's a big shock in the center and the ripples kind of spread out. And the further the teams are from, from the core, one way to think about this is they have you know, peripheral members, people who are not so... Um, necessary to the project, right? If, if they're further away from the core, those, those ripple effects from the shock won't be felt as much or those team members are spending less time. But it's still going to ripple out through the organization. The first one feels like a tsunami, right? The first one, like there's just a huge wave that comes crashing in, oftentimes takes people by surprise. It sucks out the, uh, the resource and it leaves behind devastation. The second one is much more like the ripples in a pond. The problem, though, is, you know, if you're a, a sailor and you know that um, you're trying to go uh, with the current but against the, uh, against the wind or with the wind but against the tide, right, you know, then, then you end up with a really bumpy ride. And when you have ripples that are happening in multiple directions at once, each one is only small, you can handle any of them, what happens when you get the multiplicative effect? Does that make sense? So one question that, you know, again, I'm you know, throwing questions at you rather than answers because there's not a blanket solution here. The first thing we encourage organizations to do is to get a handle on it. 